to introduce our hosts. Um, when we launched Bone and Marrow back in the fall of last year, um, we just really wanted to, you know, connect with um, other like-minded people who just shared a same desire to see people walk in freedom and, and um, instantly fell in love with this Instagram account called Enneagram Coffee and um, got to connect with them. And then when they actually sent their products over for us to highlight on our blog, um, I read the affirmations and I think I mentioned um, that I, I think I read a nine, the nine, Enneagram nine first, and I don't lead with a nine. And I got tears in my eyes on behalf of the nines that I know, because I was like, these are so well written, so thoughtful. Um, and I just, I loved them. So I was like, I want to know who these people are, um, who put so much thought and effort into it. And so I'm really excited to get to introduce you guys to Jessica and Michael Beans, who founded Namesake Coffee, which is a roastery out of Dayton, Ohio. And, um, and they created the Enneagram coffee line based on um, just their love for coffee and their mutual love for the Enneagram. Um, uh, I believe Michael has a degree in environmental horticulture, which led to turf and landscape management, and eventually into coffee sourcing, growing practices and roasting, which I love. Um, and then Jessica's background is in graphic design and communications. She's been a marketing and enrollment director for higher education, as well as a speaker and facilitator in the area of emotional intelligence, group dynamics, and leadership. And we're just really excited to get to introduce them to you. We've already had a pre-conversation with them a couple of weeks ago, which was excellent. And so we're excited to turn over the reins to them. So without further ado, we'll have Michael and Jessica take over. Hello. Awesome. Hello. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, I'm excited for this. So I want to start off personally saying, number one, we have really loved being a part of this community in this way and getting to, to have broader conversations about the Enneagram just through our project, our, our thing that we've built. Uh, and what's interesting is I, I've, I've learned a lot and I feel like I'm way more knowledgeable than I used to be, but I also just want to start off. If anybody, if anybody looks at us and, and thinks that, man, like they've got it all together, they figured everything out. No. <laughs> you know that and of course that's not the case with anybody so so let's 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 start there uh and you know for me affirmation it, it's really interesting so i want to talk just real briefly about uh when we were creating this project and we were you know developing these bags and doing all the writing it was really interesting to look at each of the nine types and try to affirm them in a real intentional uh, way that was really going to sink in, that was really going to be uh, uh, relatable, that was really going to be uh, something that they could latch onto, not just like a surface thing or some cliche, uh, just something real. But what's really interesting is getting ready for this talk. Uh, just over the last few days, like we've kind of been asking each other questions back and forth about ourselves and how we personally relate to affirmation. And just for me personally, what's been really interesting, and I just wanted to share this, is that, man, I, I have a really complicated <laughs> relationship with affirmation. And... <sighs> It's interesting, you know, she, uh, Jess was asking me questions about, uh, you know, what, what is a time in your life when you really feel like you've, uh, or a situation that you've been able to really accept affirmation in a real way? And, and also, what are some ways that, you know, you struggle with that? And it was really interesting to dive deep into that and to really, uh, you know, think, I think think about that for the first time in a really long time. 
And it was a totally different experience thinking of it in the first person. And really what I think, you know, what Jess is going to kind of go into next uh, ties in with this from the standpoint that it is so easy to, to learn about the Enneagram, to learn about personality typing tests, to learn about uh, these structures that give us language to tell us uh, who we are, who we can be, that gives us language to talk about this, which everyone says like that's the greatest thing is like the Enneagram just gives you this whole vocabulary to talk about all these things that, norm that before you just didn't have language for. And so, you know, what she's going to go into is like, I just lost my train of thought. I just totally lost it. Anyways, uh, for me, it's, it's a really complicated relationship that I have. And it was just really interesting to dive into that and to, oh, I know where I was going. So it's, it's, it's really important to get out of this, uh, this almost tunnel vision where you're learning everything about the Enneagram, you're learning everything about your type. And then you like, you learn everything about yourself and you really feel like you understand yourself. And then you learn everything about like the other eight types if you're really, really nerding out on it. But it's so important to like put all that aside and just really look at yourself and look at like really specific things like affirmation, like mental health, what was talked about before, and just really be like, oh, wow, like how, how do I actually relate to this? Like how do I uh, actually inter internalize this? And what is my feelings about this now? Because I feel like those types of things can really change over time. Uh, they can change with, you know, life circumstances. And so I'm going to let you go with that. But yeah, that, that to me was a real eye opener preparing for this, like just really stepping back into that and, and really trying to, to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was excited that we got asked to talk about this topic. Um, Cause like Michael said, we were just asking each other questions. Like when was the first time you actually really received affirmation and it was real. And like, it was just interesting. You guys are going to have a chance to dig into those questions as well today during our discussion. But it was interesting because like Michael's first response was all the times he felt like it wasn't real. Like he literally <laughs> yeah. like listed off a list of like, well, this family member, I, I never trusted them. It was fake. So like his, his first reaction to asking, when did you receive affirmation was actually going through a list of all the times he didn't feel affirmation. And so like that relationship is complex for some of us. And what we're wanting to talk about is the balance of each type, either giving or receiving. Either I find there's these consistent themes and maybe you guys can dig into your own life and see if it's true for you, where you're either soaking in too much affirmation, like it's an overextension, like you are a sponge that doesn't function unless you receive it. Like you're, 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 dependent affirmation dependent versus somebody who like doesn't give it at all versus somebody who doesn't receive it at all there's these imbalances it's kind of like what area do you soak it in too much do you push it away too much where is that complexity for you and i think that has to do with the type of affirmation we give so let's dig into what that means so right away when we started talking about affirmation we all know like have you guys do you guys follow a lot of like enneagram accounts on instagram do you guys everybody kind of follows okay so there's maybe different accounts how about like it, like books certain books have you guys have for certain authors that you like over others yes okay so everyone's kind of found different like teachers right like we've all kind of found maybe our own enneagram teachers that have introduced us to these concepts i find the ones that i don't appreciate is when it's just a shallow list of all the things I'm good at. It's like list writing, you're this, that, like, and I, 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 it's fun, I giggle, but then I go like, I want more. I want this to be real. Like, if you're gonna tell me I'm good at something, I want you to also acknowledge what I might not be good at, because then I know I can trust you. Is that relating to anybody? Do you guys ever feel that? Okay, so what was one thing when we were talking, we realized like, we don't trust affirmation sometimes because, we don't feel seen. 
It's like mm. somebody literally saw me walk by and do something nice and they're like, good job. And they don't realize they just triggered me because, because their cheap kind of affirmation wasn't helpful. So like, that, like I said, it's a compli If you actually dig into where your stance is on affirmation, it's going to get complicated quick. Like if you start asking those questions, maybe you don't like giving it at all. Like literally intimacy is terrifying. So why would I tell somebody vulnerably what I think of them? Like, why would I do that? Right? Like, so I do think we started digging into like, where are those wounds around affirmation and why is it that certain affirmation sinks for me personally and, and for when I give it to other people and it certainly doesn't. And so the one quote that like, I want to leave you guys with is like the foundation for this discussion is that we really came to the mindset when we were writing these nine affirmations um, and for ourselves is that true affirmation can only come from true understanding and true understanding can only come from truly listening. So let me say that again. True affirmation can only come from true understanding and true understanding can only come from truly listening. Like, right, like that feeling of when you're actually seen for all of you, like the first time you read an Enneagram like description and you feel naked, like you're just like, who just crawled into my house and has been observing me for a week and they just wrote a book about their observation. Like that feeling of like most people say when they first read about their type, there's this like raw, oh no, I'm seen and it's really scary. But for me, I'll speak for me personally, it then quickly turned to relief. Like somebody mm -hmm. sees all of me and I'm still okay. Like I'm good. I am like valuable. I am. And so I really think when we're talking about true affirmation and when we dig into the nine types specifically here in a minute, it's really important to think about um, how are you truly seeing yourself? That's what the Enneagram helps us do, right? Like I would assume if we all have some understanding of the Enneagram, like that's a foundation. But more so, who are you not seeing in your life? Like, who should you be affirming, but you're not doing it well because you actually aren't truly seeing them? Like, it's not enough just to like, yes, you can know somebody's type and that helps, but we all know we should rise above our type, right? We don't want to take the Enneagram and make it so cliche and so flat and so unhelpful that we're actually now putting somebody in a box. Like, we all know that's not helpful, right? So who in your life are you actually not affirming in their language or in their way? Because what you're doing is you're affirming it in the way you want to get it back. Like that is like, was my discovery in like this kind of emotional intelligence journey that I've gone on and like any ground that I've gone on is that like, I would find ways to affirm others because there was a little string attached because I wanted it to come on back. And that's not true affirmation because I'm not truly seeing them. Anyone else guilty or is it just me? I feel like I'm like laying out my junk here, right? Okay, so it's like every type probably does that in a different way, right? Like I, I, that's probably unique to my type, but I, I'm sure there's something relatable. Maybe there's something else for you. It's a different string that you've attached. But I really want to say like, okay, even in all the discourse going on in our country, like everything that's going on, we're all trying to do our best to like encourage and support one another. Are we doing it out of our own voice and our own bias? Or are we actually seeing people and hearing them and listening to them and then affirming them in the language and the way they want to receive it? Like, where is that gap for you? Is it generational? Is it cultural? Is it Enneagram type? Is it, is it gender-based? Is it like, there's so many biases where we construct our own identity and then we only see through our lens. We don't take the time to see other people. And so the point that we wanted to at least just kind of throw out to you guys is where is that true for you? So where is that true in your own life where you're choosing not to see somebody for who they are and instead you're affirming them in the way you want to get it? So it's twofold. It's where are you not receiving affirmation where you probably should and you probably could. And like Michael said, when I asked him, where did you actually feel affirmed in your life? He like literally went through like 10 people who, who made him not feel affirmed. And I actually stopped him and I was like, babe, I asked you, where did you feel affirmed? And he had to like catch himself and be like, whoa, like I had trauma around affirmation. Like I literally just gave you 10 reasons why I don't feel valuable instead of answering the question, which was when do you actually let yourself absorb it? 
Well, and, and even realizing because of that, uh, realizing because of that, I am not truly able to even give affirmation to other people because for me, it was almost like, oh, if, if, if people don't say anything to me, like that's good. Like if, if, if my boss doesn't say anything about my work, like that's a win <laughs> versus like, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll say nice things about my work and how I do things and, and how things look when I'm done with them. And either I don't remember them or I don't pay attention to them. But when he, whenever he criticizes me, not even in a mean way, but just saying like, hey, you know, just so you know, like such and such area needs a little TLC or this area needs a little bit of help. Like I take it very personally. Uh, and, and I think a lot of that is tied into my inability to like receive it when he's actually telling me good things and knowing like, oh no, he's, he's not criticizing me, like my character. Like he's just pointing out a fact, like, he, like for the most part, when I need to fix something, it, does need fixed so yeah yeah no and that's exactly that was our discussion this week is that each one of us gives and receive affirmation based on our type based on our culture based on our uh the way we are raised like each one of us like so it was funny hearing michael's specific struggle around not receiving affirmation and not giving it and he like realized that even like through the writing of the enneagram bags which we're going to jump into now like even in writing for his type it was just this moment of like, I don't believe this stuff. <laughs> I don't believe this stuff that you wrote about my type. And then, or like other people, that's not every type, right? Like for me, it was this recognition that like, hmm, the minute I found out my Enneagram type, okay, tell me, have any of you done this? The minute I found out my Enneagram type and I knew I typed correctly, I felt like my entire foundation like shifted underneath me. Like my entire view of like what, I've experienced in my life, just like I was here, I thought this was life, I thought this was the construct, I thought this was the way the world worked, and it just shifted. And so because of that, I realized like, I literally, my relationship to affirmation happened with like, I would chase career volunteer opportunities, it doesn't matter what it is, I would literally chase it even if I didn't like it so that I could get affirmation. Like, whereas he deflected, I chase it. Like I literally rebuild my entire life around friends that give me affirmation. And then I realize they don't actually see me and I just have changed my life for them. So like we're talking about, I don't know if you guys are guessing our types. I know you're not supposed to, but everyone does. Is this true? Are you all trying to guess our types? Yeah, I know. Okay. It's okay. We do it too. We're not supposed to, but we do it too. Um, so you can probably already get an idea of it. We're going to talk about our own types now as we go through the nine, but like, each one of us, depending on your Enneagram type, your background, your, your childhood has a complicated relationship, I think, to affirmation. Even if you think like, I'm great at affirmation, I love it and I give it out freely. That's probably complicated because maybe there's people in your life that don't want it and you've been pushing affirmation on them. Mm. Like that even in and of itself is a complicated relationship to affirmation. So now we've kind of uh, stirred the pot. Okay, <laughs> so I'm sorry if we, we're direct, but it's because we've been doing the wrestling, so we wanted to wrestle with you guys too. Okay, so let's actually dig into the nine types. So what we're gonna do for our last couple of minutes together, how many more minutes do we have, by the way? When do we wanna break for discussion? Okay, you, you'll get to me. Oh, muted. It's always a drinking game. Sorry. I was waiting for Amanda to answer it really. Oh, it was no problem. Fun. Lead. but I think like at 7 35 or so 30 35 so maybe five minutes yeah. great so what we're going to do for this last little bit together is we're actually going to go through the nine types now a uh, typical Enneagram um you know uh rules right we don't have very much time to go into each one of these types so each type is going to feel a little bit like misrepresented or not heard because we we're literally just going to go through all nine knowing that there's so much more complexity to each one of these nines like we all know that but i just have to say it like we're going to give you a snippet of each one and then you guys can take that and dig in more well and also what we're going to do is we're we're not going to talk about oh ones receive affirmation in this way we're going to tell you how when we wrote these, we actually sent our, the affirmations to friends of ours and people that we knew that were that type to say, hey, 
how does this sit with you? How do you feel about it? Uh, edit it, please. You know, mm -hmm. we want this to actually land with you and, and make you feel represented and heard. And so we're going to walk through like right. what their responses were and, and what, uh, what they told us through the process. Uh, and so, yeah, it's not just going to be a, you know, us going through the nine types and how they receive affirmation, you know, you know, Honest. anybody can do that, but we, oh, we just wanted to one? pull back the veil oh, of, there. I was of looking how, for our first one. Got it. um, you know, how people responded when we, yeah. when we started this. Exactly. And that's, what's more interesting is that it was like, yes, a list of words, like he said, things you're good at, but it's the reaction to affirmation that we felt like we got pushed back from each type. And like I said, each type, we had about three, four, five different types review each affirmation and give us like really brutal feedback, which you're already guessing my type, but get asking for really brutal feedback and being like, you suck at speaking for my type. Like that was hard, <laughs> but we wanted that. Like we literally wrote them a letter and we were like, you will do your entire type across the world a disservice if you don't give us critical feedback right now. <laughs> like we were like, don't be nice. It's about you. Like this is about you feeling affirmed and heard. Oh, and to give some like, here, hand me that one. That's what I was looking for before. Like, we're just going to talk through, start with type one. Um, but what we're talking about is like on our coffee bags, the very top part, like all of this is what we call our morning affirmation. So I'm sorry, we didn't explain that. That's what we were talking about the whole time. Um, so what this is, is it was our intention that it's not really about coffee. Like, yes, we roast coffee. So like this was fun for us, but it was the project was about this, which was about the morning affirmation which is why we started talking to bone and marrow about this in the first place um so just jump in and we'll start with one um and then we'll just go through all nine yeah so the one was really interesting uh and just i, I think the one was almost one of my favorite ones because one one person in particular uh a person that we know really really well sent us back like two or three pages of just red edits, uh, you know, spelling, grammar, uh, links like, to resources. Yes. Um, just like, just tore it apart. And at the same time said like, I'm so sorry. Like I was probably way too over the top. Like I'm probably way too critical, but like you said, be critical. So <laughs> like, um, and and yeah, it was so interesting. And and the part that really I think that really hit home for me is the one one of the the lines that she wrote was because uh, at the end of the bag we say like know that you are good like you are you are good and read uh, the whole line read the line reading up to it yeah it it says go into the day with the assurance that in the midst of all your shortcomings you are good. And what was interesting is she, she had a hard time with that. Yeah, here, we can actually read um, you her quote. She literally said, oh, I don't have it pulled up anymore. She said, I don't actually believe that. She said, I really, I really try hard to be good. And I want people to know that I'm good because they see me making the effort. As in like, oh, it's, it's the effort that counts. It's like the fact that I'm really trying is what makes me a good person. And, and it was really interesting. She actually wanted us to take that part out and we had to be like, no, like we're gonna leave it in because that's not what makes you good. Like, yeah, you can strive for it. You can do all the work in the world, but no, you're a good person, like, because you're you. Um, so, so even really, in writing it, it gave us a yeah. chance to have an, an affirming, uh, an affirming conversation with her. Like, yeah, I recognize the effort. Like her favorite line was when we put keeper of tradition. She was like, that's my favorite line. <laughs> um, but then these other ones, we actually then, it opened up the door to have an affirmation conversation. Yeah. Um, it was also interesting because I had some like really poetic language in there. Like I thought it was so slick. And she goes, 
cut out all the political, all the, sorry, cut out all of the poetic crap. I just want it straightforward. Tell me what I'm good at and tell me what to improve on. So we literally shortened it, <laughs> took out all the errors, like made sure there's no like, just like this is what, and then they, she says like, I feel affirmed because you weren't flowery with me. You didn't beat around the bush. You just told me what I was good at and you told me what I needed to grow in and I'm okay with hearing both. But at the end of the day, we had to push her and say, no, we're going to leave it in. Like you are some of the best people we know. Like you're going to change the world and you need to know that. Okay. So for type two, um, what was really interesting sent it to a couple type two friends and um after i sent it to a friend i got a text back and it was just a bunch of crying emojis and she told me don't change a word i've already printed this and put it in my bible i promise i really tried to be critical i did try but please don't change a word crying emoji crying emoji heart emoji crying emoji like that is literally what she sent me and I had to push her and I had to be like no I'm serious girl you got to give me something like I couldn't have hit this on the first time and we'd run it by like three twos and it was like little stuff they tweaked and like tiny things but in general like it was the overwhelming abundance of just the fact that I was seeing them and affirming them was all they needed yeah. they didn't need me to get the words right they didn't need it to be perfect. They didn't need it to be in the right style or the right grammar. They just felt so, I got thank you letters for, be, for me including them in the project. Like I didn't have to get it right. And they were so seen and so loved. And I was like, oh, who is neglecting the twos in our life? And let's go not neglect them anymore. Like they just loved being a part of it. And so we realized even in that, like we didn't edit it that much. So there could be twos that read it and they're like, this is bogus, but it's like, I don't know. Cause nobody told me it was. So it was really important for us to be like, you, um, you love deeply without strings as this will be your ultimate gift of love to others. You are imperfect and that is beautiful and makes you so worthy of the love you give to the rest of us. So it was just really important for them to be seen and be imperfect and be included and belong. And that was what we kind of found for twos that they really appreciated the most. Uh, so three, so Jess is a three, if you haven't already gathered that, but she's a three. And what was great about the three is that, so Je Jess did a lot of the, the initial writing to get kind of like a foundation and a base for for all this for all for all the the types and then i would come in and do uh edits before we would send it off to to other people uh and what was interesting with the three so i can't remember what order it was in but it was it was late we had already done like maybe five or six others before we did the three and so we kind of had this good, I thought she had this good flow going of kind of affirming in a real way, but then also calling the type to, uh, calling people to, you know, not a higher standard, but like calling them out of their comfort zone, uh, calling them to, to, uh, to acknowledge some of the not so great parts about them, but that also is what makes them great. And what was interesting with the three, when I first read it, I just laughed out loud because there was like a line of what makes, you know, what you're good at. And then the rest of it was just like a list of like, and make sure to do this and make sure to do this and make sure that you like, just like the entire thing was just a whole list of like, make sure that you're doing this stuff. And I just laughed I'm like, no, like, no, like this isn't going to work. <laughs> and so, so I, I actually, um, I think the first, the first like half of it was kind of your, and then like the rest of it was like, nope, like I'm just going to finish this one. I'm, so he like I'm rewrote it. Do this. And it, it was like this realization for three is like, I was writing all of these and seeing other people for who they were, but we all know like as a three, like I have the hardest time seeing myself for who I am. And it came across so plainly when I was trying to affirm myself, which should be a threes daily practice. Yeah. Not affirming this fake version that other people see because you can't help it sometimes, but actually seeing yourself. And that should be like, a, I like wrote this and didn't even realize what I was doing until somebody was like, you're not even giving yourself enough. You've literally seen all these other types and you're not seeing yourself right now. Like I need to help you get there. And so we, yeah, he rewrote it and then we ran it by a couple other threes. And it was like, like the line that he wrote was, um, 
please know you are enough. You've done enough. And even though you will continue setting new goals and finding new dreams, you can sleep well at night knowing you've done your best. Like, anyways, I cried. So he rewrote it and then he gave me the computer and then I started crying and I was like, this is why I married you. I just love you so much. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else about Okay, so type four. So I was very, I have, a, I have a strong wing four, which was good for me. It was helpful. Um, and I have a lot of like really dear four, fours in my life that were close friends. Like these weren't acquaintances that we had to like tap on. These were like, I really cared about making sure I got it right. All of them I did, but, but I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to so accurately capture this creative individualistic spirit. And like, I went into it with like, you want to be affirmed with this like poetic language. You just want to. And I literally had my lovely sister-in-law, <laughs> but a dear, dear friend of mine write me. And she was like, I just want you to know, like, um, I know you're trying to be kind and affirm me, but it's coming across like a live, laugh, love pillow. And I just feel condescended. <laughs> and I was like, no, the last thing, like my worst nightmare is for like the four to be the most cliche of all the ones. And I was like, I was just trying so hard. And she was like, that's the point. You're trying too hard. <laughs> and it was so good to hear like what she most wanted to kind of be affirmed for was like, yes, she knows she's unique and individual and all that. But like, she wanted to hear that like her living her best life made me be better. Like me as a three who struggles with that, like I am called to be better because I see you being this unique presence in the world. And like, that's what she wanted me to focus on. Not like, you're a beautiful, da 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 da. She's like, I know I am. And that's lovely that you're telling me that. But like every four is gonna feel like this was written for a different four than me, right? Like she was kind of like letting me know that. And so like, we really tried to say like, um, uh, you know, sing at the, we said, um, sing at the top of your lungs, feel all your feelings, you know them better than anyone else and can be a catalyst for authenticity and self-discovery. Your gift to the world is you, be present, be grateful, be you. So it was like, she wanted to be seen for, a, not me putting it in a box for what I sh thought she was, but the fact that she knows who she is. That's what she wanted to be seen for. Um, so that was like, I was like, okay, got it. So I rewrote that one like a bunch of times and sent it to a bunch of fours in my life. Five. So five. Oh, we gotta hurry. We're yeah, gonna, okay. yeah, five. Ah, sorry. We'll five was, was uh... Don't hurry. Okay. Don't hurry. It's good. Yeah. Five. I was, um, I want, I don't want to say disheartening. It wasn't disheartening, but it was, it was interesting in eye a way. Opening. Yeah, sure. Eye opening. Uh, because, <laughs> well, we had one five that said, don't, don't, don't affirm me. Like, don't write a list of affirmations. Like, just give me like a chart <laughs> or like tell me all about the coffee and like give me all the technical stuff like you know put like the roast temperature and like just give me like this chart of like all the information about it. don't don't put that like okay we're like we uh, have to, it has to fit <laughs> with the rest okay uh and and then we had another person say you know like it sounds really nice like like i i I feel like you're really trying, like it sounds nice, but like, I'm just, I'm just telling you like this whole thing, this whole project, it just isn't for me. Like I don't do projects. Like I, I'm just letting you know, like I would probably never buy that. <laughs> and we're like, okay, all right, <laughs> Hel helpful. Uh, and, and so what, what we ended up writing affirmations because we felt like, okay, not every five feels that way. So, but, and even if they do, it would, we want to at least attempt to really write a real affirmation for them. But what was interesting is that we, for, for the five, the five is the only one that we really went a little bit more in depth with the coffee. Cause for the whole project, we didn't really want it to be about the coffee when we went, we wanted it to be about the Enneagram and each individual type. But for the five, we actually uh, went into more detail about like the actual uh, plant varietal that this Kenyan coffee comes from and where that uh, plant was discovered, who, who it was discovered by. And 
and and what was interesting was when we actually finished it we had five say hey like you know the affirmations were were you know kind of nice but the fact that you put the plant type and like who discovered it and like all that like that actually made it that made me feel like you actually cared about me was that you included that information like that made it feel real that you actually cared because you included that yep so they said that's how yeah. they felt seen which is funny they didn't they 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 thought the affirmation was nice but the fact that we put the effort in to speak their language was the affirmation they needed okay for six i was so excited to write six because um, I have some dear family members and my best friends. Like I have a number of really close sixes in my life. And I always feel like sixes are really misunderstood in a lot of Enneagram um, language. Um, I feel like they, they're one that gets all, everyone's misunderstood in some way. But the, but the sixes specifically, I feel like theirs get so flattened where people fixate only on anxiety. And then the affirmations come around like, you have courage. And they don't actually see the incredible, incredible, complex, quirky, funny, like the, all the other things that sixes are good at kind of get lost because if you guys go nerdy Enneagram here, because counterphobic and phobic sixes, they show up very differently in the world and they look like two different personalities depending on, look this up later if it's, if you haven't looked into it, whether they're phobic or counterphobic. So people then don't know what to focus on, I think sometimes because they show up and they look so different. So when I wrote this, I've had like five or six sixes write me personal thank you notes that they actually felt seen. Um, because like we specifically said, um, you are quirky, funny, like seriously, you're better at laughing at yourself than most other humans. We all take ourselves too seriously sometimes and you keep reminding us not to. Uh, your loyalty is unmatched. Your reliability is unwavering. So we focus not on like, yay, you overcome your fears, which is like not a thing they want to be affirmed for. Like that's a struggle. That's a, that's a trauma point. Affirming for those other things was really how they felt the most seen. And, and we got some people that really thanked us for that. Oh, um, okay. Seven. Uh, so this one's fun because, um, <laughs> so we first of all made it the shortest of all the types and i've had sevens thank me for just the fact that we knew that they were like thank you like you get me and most of the conversations when we sent in these affirmations um bye so good to see you most of these conversations um when we sent these affirmations they um would like d dialogue about the affirmation sevens gave me like 10 bullet points on how to run my business like they were like I don't, these affirmations are great but let me tell you like here's the marketing plan and here's the thing and let's do subscription boxes and how do we so it was like the affirmation for them was being involved in something exciting it was like they kind of glanced over this but for them they just felt like you are now engaging in this conversation about what we can do with it. And like, that was the affirming part. So we literally wrote um, your innovation and brainstorming a whirlwind of ideas. You may not even read this to the end because your inspiration may be peaked and you're on to the next adventure. That line is what I've gotten the most gratitude for, for sevens is they're like, oh, you didn't berate me for that. Like that wasn't a bad thing. It's okay if I didn't read the back of your bag because instead I can just enjoy this coffee and, and plan a trip with you, right? So that's what they kind of wanted to be affirmed for. All right, eight. Eight, eight was one of the first ones that, that we wrote and I, I actually remember reading it. And I think this was the only one that I remember reading it and just being like, oh, like, that's that's like done like i don't know for whatever reason the first time i read it i just really felt like it just hit the nail on the head and i don't think i have a wing eight uh so i don't know necessarily why i felt that way but it just yeah it just felt so so right uh the way that that it was written and then to talk to talk to uh, the eights that we talked to there wasn't a whole lot of of edits i think the one major feedback was uh around intensity and 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 adding that that line about intensity like that's something that i think eights really uh can get hit over the head with like, oh, you're just so intense, like you're scary or 
you get too intense about things. But really, that's one of the best traits of an eight is that they can do that in a, in a really healthy, productive way. You know, not, they can also do it in a bad way, but when they're, when they're right and when they're in health, they do it in a really productive, healthy way. And unless you yourself have done your work and are able to see that, it's really easy to just see intensity as bad. Uh, and so to affirm them in that, I think was the, the main feedback that they gave, uh, you know, to put that in there. Yeah, she actually said, and it was a female that gave us this feedback specifically. And she said, I feel so misunderstood all the time. And the fact that you put on there that my intensity was something of value was like, I don't hear that from people in my life. I always feel misunderstood for that. And that was where she said, I was actually seeing that you don't run from that. You engage with that because we're going to go, it says on the front, like, pardon me, I'm just changing the world. Like, she's like, good. Like, that's what I want to do. So, all right, last one. So nines was the very first one I wrote. Has anyone guessed that he's a nine? Um, so um, <laughs> it was the first one I wrote and um, I showed it to a couple other nines as well because I didn't want it to just be like a love letter to my husband, even though that's nice, like gross. We don't need to do that, right? So I, I like wrote it with him in mind because he's my husband and I love him. And then we ran it by some other nines. A very dear friend of mine read it and like burst into tears because a big thing was for the nine, like seeing themselves the way that everyone else sees them and like calling out this greatness that is inherently in them that they just cannot see sometimes. And so um, there wasn't a lot of changes that we got from it because the, the thing that I really wanted to come across was um, you have a voice that is worth hearing. You are glorious, a breath of fresh air in a world that is suffocating. Speak your dreams and pursue them actually run after them. No, really, get up out of your chair right now and run after them. Even that, if that means running into someone, conflict isn't always the enemy. Now awaken, awaken your greatness and set it free. So like the nines that I read felt like, like you want me to get this wrong sometimes. Like it's okay uh, for me to step into my greatness and run into it and like if it's tense and I don't know what to do with conflict and I mess up a little bit, like you want me to do that because then that ultimately means you're stepping into my greatness. So, I mean, I don't want to speak for him because it's his affirmation, but like when I talked to a lot of nines, like that was the line where like when he read it, he, that was the only thing he rewrote is like at the end, I actually put like now go and be great or something like that. And he was like, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> Like, that's not me. That's a three. Like, I'm not just going to go be great. Like, yeah, here I am, world. He said, uh, he actually rewrote the last line for now awaken that greatness and set it free. Like, it's already in you. You don't need to go do it. Like, it's there. And nines need to be affirmed for that, like, over and over and over again. 